What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 2 of the LAN project here in FM19. Hopefully you guys are good. If you haven't seen the first episode in this series, of course go check it out. If you've watched that one, you know what to expect from this series and today. It's going to be the first game of the season against Knock Breda. A very exciting time indeed. Uh, you might notice that I've updated a few of the faces in our face pack today uh, since the first episode. Very kindly sent to me by the guys over at LAN Football Club. Massive, massive thank you to them for doing it in their own time and I did talk about last episode how each episode I wanted to have a young player that we look at you know uh, as we focus on our team there's going to be players breaking into the first team different ones to take a focus on and I thought for today's we take a look at one of the four few players with continental flair in the team Daniel Severio uh, he is a Spaniard who was actually released by Udinese in real life at the end of his contract last year didn't make a single senior appearance for him and uh, well he's joined us Given our series rules, where after this first summer transfer window, we're only going to be able to sign players who are 18 or younger from Britain and Ireland, or if they're from Northern Ireland, 21 or younger, um, we're not going to have a much in the way of continental flair. But before that limit comes into play, we've snapped up this guy. He looks like a pretty good striker. Uh, he wasn't in the senior team last episode, but I was kind of re-evaluating all our youth, looking at players I might want to mentor. And he was one of the players who, given his personality only being balanced, and given the fact we've got two fairly professional forwards, um, I felt like he was worth giving a go with the mentoring. So we promoted him to the first team. I think it's going to benefit him. And uh, yeah, one for the future, a player who definitely has a chance to make an appearance or two uh, during our first season in charge. So anyway, let's talk about team and tactics. Uh, if we look at our preseason, we had a pretty successful preseason. We didn't play loads of games really over the last month. It started off a little bit slow. To be honest, we played a lot of fodder teams, which was a bit of a shame. Um, there was lots of sendings off in these games early on, which kind of made them slightly pointless exercises. You can see in a few of them, sendings off within the first 10 minutes. Um, but from what I saw of the team, I was pretty impressed. Um, we were playing, as you can see here, this system. It's a variant of the vertical tiki taka um, with different positions and roles. And uh, it's going to be kind of a 5-3-2. Although, given how much attacking freedom we're going to give our fullbacks, you could look at it as more of a 3-4-1-2 a lot of the time. Um, you know, Kebby and Tilney, especially today, are going to be given a lot of permission to get forward. And uh, throughout pre-season, we were rotating the team a lot. We had a lot of try lists playing in the team. However, it gave me a lot of time to evaluate the system, see how different players performed. And in this system, the fullbacks did really, really shine. I'll try and put some highlights of some of the preseason games so you can kind of see what they were getting up to. But yes, the fullbacks just stretching teams wide, getting in at the back post as well and contributing in the final third. And uh, with our three centre-backs, we really had a solid defence where I was kind of quite happy to let the fullbacks bomb on ahead and, you know, get further forward. Because in behind them, um, we were very, very solid indeed. So just looking at our general setup here, we are going with a sweeper keeper in Devlin in goal. He's not the quickest player in the world, but he's got 13 acceleration, so he should be fairly quick off his line. Uh, you can see just looking in general, 10 one to ones really isn't that bad uh, for this kind of level. Elsewhere in the team, uh, you can see we've got, obviously, our three centre-backs. I did a very long video uh, a few weeks ago now on playing with three centre-backs. We're going to put some of that kind of theory in practice with this series. Uh, at either side, we're going to have kind of two slightly slower full-backs. So Blanchard, at least to start the season, is going to be our left centre-back. Of course, a player we did sign, a very experienced head at 31 years old. His personality is very nice. We then have, of course, at right centre-back, club captain Shane McElhenney, uh, who I absolutely love the look of. He's so good in the air. You can see fairly loyal personality. It's a shame about his big matches and com uh, and his consistency not being the greatest, but at this level he's such a kind of player who's so far ahead, I guess, of other players in this league. I'm not too concerned about that just yet. And then, of course, within their system, within their three at the back, the heartbeat of the back three is this guy, Graham Kelly. Uh, 20 years old, a very, very athletic player, extremely quick. Uh, really can sweep up the mess in behind playing the centre-back position for us. Uh, you can see we're going to be playing him really as a centre-back on cover. He's got good acceleration, which I do like in this role. His lack of heading ability and his just general um, lacklustre anticipation kind of makes me feel like he's a better player to have in this covering role. Definitely anticipation, an important element of playing as the coverer. But given the fact he is going to be starting that a little bit deeper, I'm hoping that's going to mask over perhaps some of his weaknesses. Anyway, at fullbacks, we've got Tilney and, of course, the other guy, Kebby, at left and right back. I feel like we should compare these guys. 
as a pair. Uh, as I said, during pre-season, this full-back role really was key for us. And these two guys, very, very capable going forward. Maybe not even necessarily the greatest wing-backs defensively, in all honesty. If we just look at them as uh, wing-backs on attack, which of course is what they're going to be playing as... They're very solid in this regard, but you can see seven marking for each of them, nine passing and seven passing, not great, nine for tackling as well, but it's really their, you know, their physicals and their mentals which I think are going to really shine in this league, the sheer athleticism they have to get up and down the pitch. And they are two younger players as well, so I am looking forward to seeing how they kind of develop potentially a, not necessarily a partnership, but a synergy, you know, they're going to have to have an understanding, I feel like, on either side of the pitch. In the centre mid positions, we're going to go with Jeff Hughes, who I believe is more traditionally a winger. However, for us this year, we're going to be playing him in the centre of midfield. His legs are going a little bit, but I think for this season, we can get away with playing him as a box-to-box -box midfielder. You can see he's pretty well suited to this role. Um, obviously, a very, very experienced head, which is great to have. And I do like the look of him, and he is going to have a bit of a balancing act with, uh, well, you can see here, Fuad Sul, uh, who is an absolutely exceptional player. He's from Barnet, and we've got him in on loan until January. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to sign him perfect, uh, permanently, although I'd really like to do that. Um, with this series, I talked about the signing rules. Uh, I'll leave this one up to you down in the comments. So let me know what you think of this. Do you think we should be able to sign former players, players who have played under us at LAN uh, over the age of 21? So, for example, if we have a really young player who comes to the club, does well, but we have to sell him on so you don't have a choice... Are we allowed to sign him later because he did play for the club when he was younger? And I guess in a situation like this with Fuad Sul, I really like the look of this guy, but playing for Barnet, they don't want to extend his loan any longer. I think we'd struggle to sign him permanently. But at the same time, you know, if the right opportunity came along in the future, I'd love to have him back at the club, but obviously it would somewhat go against the rules. So the rules aren't, you know, exactly set in stone. So with that kind of situation, how do we feel about it? Anyway, at advanced playmaker, we needed kind of a creative hub in the team. We didn't really have one of those in the final third. The centre attack in mid position was somewhat lacking. Chris Eagles is going to come in and do that for us. I feel like he is going to be a bit of a link-up man. You know, the wing-backs are going to be running on further ahead of him. Uh, our two centre mid duties have quite a lot of permission to get forward. You know, Hughes' box-to-box is going to get ahead. Sul playing ball in a midfielder is going to be a little more defensive minded but on support you know he is going to make runs further up the pitch he is going to win the ball and then try and carry it forward into the final third I'm not too concerned about having one of these two guys on defend just because I feel like our back three at least in this season where we're playing against slightly weaker opposition should be kind of solid enough to deal with teams trying to hit us on the counter and then in the final third we're going to go with a poacher and a pressing forward I do have a bit of a dilemma here, and it's the fact that McDade and Stewart both have the same player preferred move, which is come deep to get the ball. Um, I don't hate it, but it does mean that when you want one of your strikers to stand on the last man, they might not do it between them. So I had a bit of a dilemma here, because I could set Stewart to a pressing forward on support, to McDade, you know, to a deep line forward on support, and have them drop deep with that PPM. But I like to have at least one striker play, you know, further up than the other. But with the PPMs, the player preferred moves being come deep to get the ball, I'm going to have them both on attack. Now, naturally, the instructions are somewhat going to conflict, um, you know, with the, the in terms of the roles permissions, in terms of what I want them to do in the system role-wise, but will clash with their player preferred moves. However, I'm hoping by having both of them on attack, the times at which both of them drop deep to get the ball isn't going to be as common as it might otherwise be. If that makes sense. Obviously, we'll see how that goes. We can analyse it. Maybe we'll have to tweak the system. Maybe we'll set them both on support and have Eagles more on attack behind. But at least to start the season, I want to try them both on the attack duty. It might work. It might not. It's going to be interesting to see how these conflicts play out. Of course, this is a new feature in FM where you can kind of see these conflicts. Um, and uh, to be honest, it's one of those things where I think you could miss them in previous years. Whereas I've not missed it here. And it does provide a little bit of a dilemma for us. Anyway, in terms of mentality, we're going to start on balanced. Although I think in a lot of games, actually to start the season, I might start with it. We might start just with a bit more of a positive style. You know, a little more aggressive with the ball. Especially in our division, we should be winning the league very comfortably this first season. In terms of the instructions um, when we do have possession, um, I'm sticking a lot with the vertical tick attacker ones for now. You know, I feel like the tactical presets in FM this year are pretty solid. As the year goes on, I'm sure we will adapt the tactic, we'll tweak it somewhat, but at least for now, this is what we're going to go with. You know, we're going to try and work the ball into the box, really focus play through the middle, and try and play out from the back when we can. Uh, that is, in real life, very much a big emphasis at LAN is playing attractive football. I want to try and make the most of that. 
that. You can see we have got distribute to centre backs on. Naturally, at this level, our centre backs aren't the best passers of the ball, but I want to give them a chance to at least try and play it out. Um, you know, maybe this is the kind of thing where it will work this season, but if we were to get promoted, it might not work against slightly better teams. We'll have to wait and see in that regard. Uh, you can see we are going to try and counter press. We are going to try and break away quickly on the counter. And in terms of our general play, you know, we're going to press high. We're going to try and, um, you know, really rush teams. I feel like we have a professional squad. You know, we train harder than other teams in the division. We have quite an athletic team in a lot of positions. I feel like we are a team that should be trying to press hard, should be trying to, you know, really play with their energy and tempo about us. And it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in our first year. So anyway, with all of that in mind, let's get into our first game. I've kind of indirectly given you a run through through our starting 11 here. It's a team I'm pretty happy with. On the bench, we've got options as well. We've got Paddy McAnally. Uh, I love this guy's name. Absolutely ex exceptional in the air. Great jumping reach. Great heading. Um, you'll notice here that the attribute colours are slightly weird in terms of... You might have noticed there were a few more yellows last year. Just a little FM tip slash something that I forgot to do myself. Um, I would love it if one day this was tied to football managers save games as opposed to a setting uh, that you have to change between saves. Uh, I tend to change the thresholds just down a little. Uh, I like to do this in lower leagues. I recommend it. You know, Try and work out what a good and excellent attribute threshold is for your team. For me, I like having it on 5, 9 and 13. Um, so this guy is very, very good. He's not the greatest marker and he's not the best passer of the ball, which is one of the reasons why I'm not going to go with him as one of our starting three centre-backs. But through the year, we've got plenty of centre-back options. I'm sure he will get a time to shine. We have got backup at both full-back positions. We've got Thomas Cosgrove, who's going to play out at right-back if we need him to. Can also play slightly higher up the pitch. He's very, very athletic. Martin Donnelly has been an exceptional player, I believe, in real life for Lan. Uh, he's more of an attacking player naturally, but he has been training in pre-season to play wing back and I think it's a role he's going to be capable of playing maybe not necessarily the best defensive player but going forward he's definitely going to offer a lot and I feel like him and Tilney will get plenty of game time in that position we then have Carl Stewart who may well start a few games as the season goes on with Fuad Sul only being in on loan until January you know and possibly losing him I don't want to become over reliant on him so uh, yeah Carl Stewart definitely a player that's going to get time in this team and then up top, a player who's done pretty well in preseason, Brandon Oddie. I'll put in some of his goals for you guys to see. Um, but yeah, in preseason, he got a few nice little goals latching on the end of corners and kind of crosses from out wide. It'll be interesting to see if he can really hit the ground running with us this year. But anyway, with all that said and done, let's get into our first game of the year. We're taking on Knock Breda. Always a bit of a dilemma and something that I've not had to deal with in a little while is only having five substitutes. So we'll try and make do with that. Uh, you can see actually they are lining up with a not dissimilar system to us. So it's <laughs> going to be interesting to see how this plays out. This is our first game of the season. Uh, our system wants us to mark players more tightly. I am okay with that. Uh, I would also like to try and press their defence uh, a little bit where we can. Obviously, we, we have pretty energetic players. I'd like to try and rush them out from the back, force them to go long, and then we can maybe try and recycle possession in the middle. Uh, interestingly enough, they're playing without a defensive midfielder, so hopefully Chris Eagles is going to find a little bit of room to operate in. So, first game, let's get a good team talk if we can. I'm going to go with Passionate, you know. Putting faith in these players, um, this is the team that I like the most right now. I think throughout the season we will start to adapt our team a little bit more in terms of who we play and start to pick it based off form. But for the here and now, this is what we're going to go with. We're taking on Knock Breda just to quickly... Actually, it's already all set up, so we're good to go. We're good to go. Let's get up our match stats, but... Make ourselves it at home. This the La I was about to say the Larn dugout. This isn't the Larn dugout because we are away from home. But the dugout that we're going to be playing in, we can you know get comfy in here and see how we get on. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Hopefully, hopefully we can get things off to a great start here. T taking on Not Breda, I expect us to dominate possession, which we are doing within the first twenty minutes. We need to make something happen though. Chrissy Eagles from the corner goes back post. McElhenney. Has a header. Actually, it was Thomas Stewart in the end. I thought it was McElhenney. Maybe Stewart just in front tried to get another touch on it. It did go over the crossbar in the end, unfortunately for us. Another set piece, though. Chris Eagles again to that back post. McElhenney this time narrowly over. Lots of chances early on from corners going in our favour. Kebby now with a chance from the throw-in. That's not the best throw-in, Kebby, but I'm going to give you another chance. Sull to Chris Eagles. He's been very involved. Hughes is there! And it's the homeboy hero, Jeff Hughes. Homegrown at club, he's come back from England this season. And when he comes back with a bang, 
gets a goal. He's going to be playing that more kind of narrow position for us, more traditionally a wide man. But playing in the centre of midfield here, Chris Eagles with the initial effort. It was blocked. It fell to Jeff Hughes and he bashes it in. Welcome back to the club, Jeff. Hopefully you enjoy your stay. I think he's going to be an extremely important piece of the Larn FC puzzle as this season goes on. You can see we are dominating this game early on, which is absolutely great to see. Half-time, only 1-0. Um, I, I would like a little bit more from us, to be honest. You know, I expect us this year to do uh, pretty w special things. I'd like to really set a, a record-breaking season. I think we'll go a little bit more attacking here. They've not really created a lot going forward when we've played a more positive brand of football. Let's give everyone a permission, you know, just to get a little bit more involved in the play in the final third and see what we can do. Chris Eagles, you know, playing that advanced playmaker or really involved well here. You can see now goes wide to Kebby. Kebby with a back heel Eagles. I mean, really lovely football, might I say. Really passed around nicely. Unfortunately, the finish at the end of it just flew over the crossbar. I think Chris Eagles got a, maybe a little bit excited by the opportunity that presented itself. Let's do some changes here. McDade hasn't had the greatest of games, so we'll bring in Brandon Oddy for him. The youngster going to make a debut. Um, Fuad Sul has also struggled a little, so let's bring in Carl Stewart for him. We'll hold on to our last sub for now. Of course, with us only having three substitutes on the bench, I'm quite used to having seven um, in the Premiership within Northern Ireland, you do get seven, but for this year, we're not, we're not going to have as many options as Eagles has a chance. I mean, it was another long shot, and it only narrowly went wide. I feel like I might, with this save, go off director and just stick it on. Um, what would I want it on? I don't know. Let's, let's wait for this highlight to play out first. Tilney, can, you, can we zoom in more? We can zoom in more. Tilney, what can you do here? Chrissy Eagles, don't get caught on the counter here. That's not what we want. They're going to try and do it to us. McElhinney, can you get across with the captain's armband on? Can he stop the ball coming in? He can't. Back post. Blanchard heads it clear. I mean, they've not done anything all game, not Brady. It would be a cruel twist of fate if they could do something now. Drysdale, going back, I might be a little bit nervous here. This is not how I want to start our time here on the back foot. I want us to be playing very much from the front outwards. Ball dinked over wide. Kebby is in no man's land. I don't know who that's gone in off. It's gone in off Graham Kelly, actually, in the end. Questionable defending, I think, at the very least there. It's the best way to describe what we've just witnessed. You can see here, Colbert crosses it in. And yeah, Graham Kelly just playing. He's not the best in the air. We talked about that pre-game. That's why he's playing the covering role. Been caught out a little there. I mean, maybe... I should, I should be regretting playing as attacking as we have. We've got one sub left in us. Tilney's not had the greatest of games. You know what, Martin Donnelly? Get further forward here. I want you I want you to play it as a wide midfielder. And also, Kebby, you as well, son. Slightly higher up the pitch for us. I, wa I want these guys to get further forward. They're going to ditch the wing-backs in favour of wide midfielders. I feel like we can afford to go a little bit more attacking as Hughes is going to try and whip it in. McElhinney, can he be the hero? Yes, he can. The club captain in at the back post. First time of asking, the keeper stopped it. What a finish that was at the second time of asking. Hughes involved in the play with that initial set piece. McElhinney, great save, but the rebound. I mean, the keeper had absolutely no chance. Just smashed into well, the top corner. And now suddenly, I feel, I feel like we might just want to change our fullbacks. Just, just back to what they were on before. Wing back on attack, please, boys. Suddenly, I'm not as keen to throw men forward if we can avoid it. But um, we've been well worth our lead here. We've been very, very good. Not played necessarily the most attractive football in terms of the goals we've scored, but they all count. And we've won it here. Oddie, have a go! Oh my gosh, that was not far wide by him. Because looking for that goal on his league debut, he'd love to get it. Our third choice striker this year was released by Palace. McElhinney, back post, it's gone in again. Jeffy Hughes, he was completely unmarked then, McElhinney. And he's made the most of it. 3-1 here, we are laughing. We are laughing. And it's uh, Hughes, he got a goal, he got an assist. McElhinney, an unlikely hero. The club captain, questionable play by their player on the post. Tried to head it over, ended up nodding it further into the goal. Set piece for Newbury here, hits it. I mean, look at the bend on that. Unfortunately, not enough dip on it to get it in and under the crossbar. Five minutes left. Can we hold on? If things are as we are, we're going to go into second. It's been a pretty commanding performance all in all. Would like to create a little bit more in the way of clear-cut chances, but I'm not going to knock the play today. Relied on, well, some good set pieces, some good authority in the air. You know, that's something that Blanchard and McElhinney really do bring to our team, going forward and defensively. 
feel like we are going to be able to make a lot of set pieces this year. But yes, what a win that was. You can see, you're looking at the stats, we were pretty dominant all in all. McKellenly with the man of the match performance, not entirely surprising for him. That 14 jumping reach and 13 headers, working wonders for us. Jeff Hughes as well picking up a goal was great to see. In terms of concerning performances, David McDade. I don't want to call you out, David, but need a little bit more from your son going forward. But he's got plenty of time throughout this season to make that happen. You can see we were predicted to win, so... We've achieved what was expected of us, but it's hard not to be happy with that in terms of our first game in charge. And, uh, well, hopefully we can continue to build off that going forward. Anyway, one last question I've got for you guys, and it is a big one, is if you are a Northern Irish viewer, I'd like you to explain the various kind of cup competitions we're in. Because I've never been in a country where we have five domestic cups that we play in. Which of these are the ones I should care about? I'm kind of looking at the ones the board care about as my kind of general guideline. If you'd like to reference them in relation to the English FA Cup and League Cup, that would probably help me out a little bit. But of course, the league this year really is going to be the main focus. In terms of when we'll be back, I think we'll see how things are going. Porter Down are a team predicted to do very, very well this year. I guess it's worth just having a look at the season preview. You can see they are second favourites. Uh, along with this team, uh, who I, I don't know the full name of, so I'm going to load them. You can see Ballin and Mallard at United. That does that does not roll off the tongue with me, but yes, they they have a nice band. Is that a duck? I don't know answers on a postcard, but um, they look pretty solid as well. I think we picked up a few youngsters from them. They started off the season well. Porter Down won two. Yeah, I think Porter Down might be where we come back. That's going to be in mid-September, just over a month's time. We'll give us a nice chance just to reflect on things, see how we're getting on. Inevitably, over this first month, we will tinker with the tactics slightly. We're really going to be trying to find our feet and work out exactly where we lie within the pecking order of the league. But ultimately, I do expect us to go up quite comfortably this year. Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this episode from me today. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, please do drop a like on the video. It is massively appreciated. And uh, yeah, as always, hopefully I see you guys on the next one. And it's me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.